So that said, I want to give some reasons for why you should believe that uh, abortion is, is so gravely immoral uh, that it ought to be illegal. So I think I have here five arguments that I wanted to share. Uh, the first argument is a simple one. I call it the humanity argument. Uh, it's wrong to intentionally kill innocent biological human beings. A fetus is an innocent biological human being. Abortion intentionally kills a fetus. Therefore, abortion is wrong. And now the scientific evidence is clear on this, that the unborn are biological human beings. Uh, Nathan has admitted this in one of his books. He says, early abortions involve killing biologically human beings, individual, member, or individual members of our species. Um, now, you might object to the premise. There's something wrong with the premise. It's wrong to intentionally kill innocent biological human beings, since it doesn't account for killing non-human beings. What if there were intelligent aliens? Would it be wrong to kill them? Well, I would say yes, but for different reasons. So uh, that would only show there's different reasons for why it's wrong to kill rational creatures, which I'll get to a little bit later. But that the existence of intelligent non-humans would not refute the truth. It is wrong to intentionally kill innocent biological human beings. Uh, if you believe in that proposition, uh, then it would follow that you should be against abortion. Now, another objection might be, we do intentionally kill innocent biological human beings. Um, we take a permanently comatose individual off life support. Uh, but in these cases, uh, we are not directly intending the death of an individual. We're not directly killing someone. We're allowing them to die. So, for example, if we were to take a person off of a vent, an unconscious person off of a ventilator, and they continued to breathe on their own, we wouldn't proceed to smother them because our intention was to remove uh, disproportionate medical care, not to kill an innocent person. So I think a person is perfectly rational to believe it is always wrong to intentionally kill an innocent biological human being. There's no reason to doubt that principle. And since the unborn are innocent biological human beings, it follows it is wrong to kill them via abortion. Number two would be a personhood argument. So my next argument would be based on an inference to the best explanation related to the concept of personhood. So Nathan and I both agree there's a special class of beings called persons that have a right to life. Uh, we also agree that we are persons. You all watching this debate are persons. Uh, but many other humans who don't understand this debate would also be persons, like mentally disabled adults or newborn infants. Uh, we also agree there are many beings that are not persons, uh, rocks, carrots, uh, and I would also say other forms of animal life. Uh, I don't know if Nathan would agree, but I think most people would agree that rats and pigeons uh, are not persons. So any definition of what a person is, it needs to account for clear examples of persons. And it also should not include clear examples of non-persons. Uh, so we can't, uh, so we, the definitions that we give, we have to be careful. If we say, well, a person is just anything that can feel pain, that will include highly controversial examples like rats would be an example, or pigeons, or possibly snakes and other reptiles. Uh, if we say that a person is any being that can think rationally, engage in rational discourse, it will exclude uh, uncontroversial examples of persons, like newborn infants. A better definition would be an individual member of a rational kind. So under this view, you and me and Dr. Nobis, infants, disabled humans, uh, they would all be persons. This would not depend on our current functional abilities or what we can do, but our innate capacity for certain functional abilities or what we are. So this definition would also exclude non-human animals like rats, pigeons, snakes, because they're not members of a rational kind. Finally, this definition is species neutral. It could include rational aliens, for example, if it were discovered that they did exist. So this definition, it satisfies an inference to the best explanation. Uh, it perfectly accounts for views of personhood pro-life and pro-choice advocates both share. Uh, when it comes to these uncontroversial cases like newborns, uh, other uh, lower animal life forms uh, that we generally agree, there might be exceptions that generally agree are not persons. So this view is also not ad hoc or arbitrary. Uh, the inclusion of the unborn in it naturally flows from the definition's emphasis on rational capacity. Since there's no good reason to reject this definition of personhood and no uh, better alternative to it, uh, we should include this, and since it would follow the unborn or persons, we should not abort them because abortion directly kills an innocent person, which all other things being equal is wrong. My uh, third argument will be one based on personal identity. All right, so it'll go like this. If an organism that once existed has never died, 
then this organism still exists. I think that makes sense. If you have an organism, it doesn't die. It's still around somewhere. I Number two is I am an organism. I, I, now, some people disagree, but I think that's very clear. I am an organism. Therefore, I am the organism that once existed in my mother's womb and never died. It is always prima facie wrong to kill me. And since I existed in my mother's womb, it was prima facie wrong, generally wrong, on the face of it, to kill me at that time. And what is true about killing me is true in general for everybody else. If it's wrong to kill me or kill me at any stage of my existence, uh, it'd be the same for all of you. Therefore, it is wrong to kill anyone else who lives in his mother's womb. So this would be an argument uh, from personal identity. Now, let me defend some of the more controversial premises. Uh, first, you might deny that we're organisms. You might say, well, we're just minds that exist within organisms. We are a mind, not an animal or an organism. Uh, but I think it leads to many uh, implausible conclusions. Uh, first, if people are only minds and they're not physical organisms, uh, no one has ever been raped, actually. We could only say their bodies had been raped in the same way we would say a person's car has been vandalized if you are not an organism, if you are just a mind that owns or inhabits a body. Uh, but if I am my body, it makes sense also why the government could not take a part of me. If my body is just property, government could tax it, require forced uh, donations of it, maybe. Uh, but my body isn't a part of, isn't something I own, it is me. Also, if I'm just a collection of thoughts in a mind, uh, then I don't think. That's a weird thing. Thoughts don't think. They're the things we think of. Uh, but if you're trying to understand me and what we're saying today, you're a thinking animal. In fact, anyone watching this, there is a thinking animal in this audience in a chair or in front of a screen. Uh, so there's a thinking animal and there's you. And I find it highly implausible that you are not that thinking animal uh, that is watching the debate. You, you are that same being. Uh, finally, if I'm just a collection of thoughts, uh, where am I when I'm asleep? Like, where am I? If I'm just a collection of thoughts, do I not occupy a spatial coordinate? Uh, do I stop existing? Uh, do I start existing again when I, when I wake up tomorrow? Uh, if, but if I'm a living organism, then as long as that organism exists, then I exist. And this was true from the moment that I was conceived. Uh, the other controversial premise would be it's always wrong to kill me. And now Nathan has said in previous writings, well, you know, not all of our rights are universal. Like I have a right to drive a car. I didn't have that right when I was a, new, a newborn or a fetus or a right, I didn't have a right to vote when I was five. Uh, but there are other rights that do seem universal. Like I always had a right to not be tortured, uh, to not be enslaved, for example. And I think most people would find the right to life to be more of an essential right we always have, not a conditional right we may or um, may not have. My fourth argument would be this. Uh, it's called the future like ours argument. So this is independent of personhood. Even if you're not convinced about the unborn being persons or personhood in general, we can approach the issue of abortion and uh, go at it from the reverse direction and say, well, abortion is killing. That's pretty obvious. Uh, then we can ask, well, what makes killing wrong? Why is it wrong to kill anything? Like, what is it particular that makes killing wrong? And I would say that what makes most sense is that the wrongness of killing, its wrong, primary wrongmaking feature, is that it deprives someone of a valuable future, in particular, a future like ours. Uh, it is, most people would agree, it's not wrong to fumigate a barn to get rid of rats uh, because rats are a nuisance and they don't have a valuable future like ours. If there were human squatters in a barn, most people would say you could not gas them in order to remove them. You might, you'd have to use other nonviolent means because that would be killing a being that has a future like ours. So if that is what makes killing wrong, then it seems clear to me that uh, fetus, human fetuses and embryos, just like human newborns and toddlers, they have a future like ours as well that abortion would deprive them of, and so abortion would be wrong. Uh, now, what are some objections someone might make this? You might say, well, a fetus doesn't have a future like ours because we're psychologically connected to our futures. You know, we, we're, I'm here now and I'll be there in the future thinking back on this debate. Uh, but I don't think that's the case because we recognize the wrongness of killing beings who are very weakly or maybe not even psychologically connected to their futures at all, like newborns. Um, in writing on this, uh, Nathan has said uh, that even when it comes to newborns, there is no, he says of fetuses, there is no even broken chain of experiences from the fetus to that future person's experiences. Babies are at least aware of the current moment, which leads to the next moment and so on. Uh, but the problem is uh, 
what if it's transitory? What if, if there's a broken link, uh, then we don't have one being that extends into the future. Uh, just like a broken link in a chain will cause a lamp to fall from a ceiling, a broken chain and identity would mean the person doesn't persist. Uh, if, only your di- if only your disposition survived into the, f- into the future, like a newborn, I think Nathan would probably think you had not survived. So I don't think that if fetuses do not have a future like ours because they're not psychologically connected to their future, I find it hard to believe that newborns uh, would qualify for that uh, as well. Uh, but we agree killing newborns is immoral and so immoral it ought to be illegal. And the primary wrongmaking feature there, I would say, is just as much shared uh, with fetuses and embryos. All right, here's my fifth and final argument for the wrongness of abortion, why it's so wrong, it should be illegal. It's similar uh, to the future like ours argument, it's called the impairment argument. So uh, this will be interesting. Imagine Mary conceives a child in the month of July and she'll give, if she conceives in July, she'll give birth to a child with a mild mental handicap called Bob. Now, most people would say that Mary has not harmed Bob because if she had waited until August, she wouldn't conceive Bob. She would conceive Bob's brother, Bill. All right. So there would have been different sperm, different egg. So if Mary conceives Bob in July, she doesn't harm Bob, even though Bob comes into existence with a mild mental handicap. Any other alternative would mean Bob would not exist at all. But suppose Mary waits a month and she conceives Bob's healthy brother, Bill, in August. She then takes a drug that causes Bill, while he is an embryo, an embryo that we would call Bill, that causes that embryo to develop a mild mental handicap. Now, unlike in the Bob case, Mary does seem to have harmed Bill because it's not a choice between Bill never existing and Bill having a mental handicap. Mary is morally blameworthy because she made another choice. She impaired Bill's healthy development. And if the reason to cause a minor impairment uh, is also, that's wrong, is also present in causing a greater impairment, like let's say paralysis, uh, then the impairment would be even worse and would be equally wrong, if not more so. And since death is the most severe impairment of uh, of function a person can endure, it follows it's wrong to inflict death upon Bill when he was an embryo. And so abortion uh, would be wrong because it's a greater impairment. Um, But remember, the harm that's involved, the harm is not merely causing a handicapped person to come into existence. Some people will say, uh, in fact, Nathan has said on his website, uh, the reason causing something like fetal alcohol syndrome to be wrong uh, is because it makes a person worse off. All right. Life would have been better for, let's say, Bill, if his mother had not taken the pill to give him a mild mental handicap. But that's an interesting line of argument, because it seems to assume that there is a healthy individual in the womb and a, a pill or prenatal alcohol abuse harms this individual And this same individual will exist at a later time with these symptoms and make him worse off. Uh, So I think that that shows that if it's wrong to cause this kind of minor impairment and the the same reason for that obtains in the major impairment case like paralysis or death, uh, then the impairment argument would show that abortion is wrong because it's the worst impairment on a person's developmental abilities you you can cause. It causes them to no longer develop anymore, it kills them. And that's a serious wrong when committed against an innocent person ought to be illegal, just as we do with other born individuals. So that is my case, uh, and I will offer...